Hello everyone, it's Nathan from Nathan's DIY Garage. Today we're working on a BMW E39 with the M52 engine on a no start problem. Okay, so this car came in yesterday. This is a friend's car. It is a no start. What the problem is, is he parked it in his driveway, got the next morning, and it wouldn't start. Uh, so it did stumble. We're gonna try to cold start. It's been sitting all night. If it's doing what it was doing, turn off the buzzer there for you. Uh, it's going to start, die, and then not start again. So let's see what happens. Okay, start and die. Stumble. And nothing. Okay, so I can smell fuel. Let's go ahead and pull the hood latch. Let's go out here and get under the hood. Okay. So here we are, and this is a single vanless motor. Now, first thing you want to do is spray some carburetor cleaner in here, or starting fluid. Pull that hose off, spray it in the intake, not a lot, just a little, and see if the car starts, see if that's your problem. If it's not getting fuel, it's probably a fuel pump. Okay, so this car yesterday, before I left his house, I already sprayed it. It did not start and you can smell fuel when you're cranking it if you crank it for a while. So once you check for the bad fuel pump, you can tell by the way this thing cranks or I can tell by the way it cranks, it's probably something with the crank sensor or the cam sensor. Now on the M52, the single vanos, it only has one cam sensor. So if something goes wrong with the cam sensor, it's not going to start. It can't see the camshaft and obviously it has the same crank sensor as the M52 TU and M54 and M56 I believe. The crank sensor is way down here on the side of the engine block. So what we're going to do first, we're going to change the cam sensor because it's easy. Uh, both these sensors here, it should be a pretty quick job. Now to change the crankshaft sensor, you will need to take off the rubber boot, unclip the clips for the mass airflow, unscrew the plug in and you're going to want to pull the rubber boot out. We should be able to get to it with that. If not, we may have to take out the hex bolt here and there and that's going to remove the trash control secondary throttle body off so I can physically get my arm down in there to take the Allen key bolt out of the sensor, unplug it and pull it out. Okay, so before we start, when I was cranking it, the tachometer was moving up and down. A lot of guys say if the tack is not moving up and down when you're cranking it, the sensor is bad. That doesn't necessarily guarantee that's the problem. This is just what I think it is. So what we're going to do, we're going to start off by taking a 32 millimeter wrench. You guys probably don't have one of these, so you could use a vice grip if done gently. You're going to want to break this thing loose by going to the left. This one is not very tight. Keep the wrench close by. Now, <clears throat> this thing here, we might have to take the two bolts out here to get this cover out of the way to unplug this. Uh, sometimes I get it without doing that. I'm going to go ahead and take that off now because uh, most of you guys probably will. Okay, so as most of you guys know that have these cars, these have a little cover that goes in there. You take a straight screwdriver and you just pop that out. Same on the back. Those are 10 millimeter bolts. We're going to go ahead and lift that out. We're just going to kind of set this up here like this out of the way. Try not to turn it over and lose your bolts. Uh, this guy here, this has a CCV delete. We're going to go ahead and squeeze this. It comes out the same way either way. I don't know if I could do this or not with one handed. You have a grip there and you have a little grip there. And the theory is to squeeze that and it comes off like that. However, that doesn't always work that good. A lot of times the hose breaks. So we're going to go ahead and unplug the vanyl solenoid. There's a little bale right there. You squeeze. like that 
it comes off I just broke it loose so I'll go with a wrench we're gonna have to use a wrench one more time it's not quite loose enough to do by hand yet and once you turn it just a little bit it should come out like that and you're gonna have a little bit of oil drip out of it when you take it off off like so there is a little oil ring on there be careful not to mess that up we're gonna set that out of the way so next we're gonna go ahead and un we're gonna go ahead and pull the sensor so on this car I think we're gonna have to go and pull the banjo fitting remember right that's a 19 we're gonna go, go ahead and pull it let me get the wrench and I'll come back okay so here we are it is a 19 I went and broke it loose We're gonna go ahead and take this off of here. There's gonna be two washers. We're gonna be on want to be very careful not to lose either one of those. Okay. As you can see, there's a washer on top. We're gonna go and try to pull him off without dropping him. Okay. There's a washer on the bottom. That's actually pretty good doing it one-handed. Um, we're going to go and set this stuff up here where it's not going to roll off and you can see the washer there and the washer right there. Now those are aluminum washers made to go on each side of the banjo fitting to crush and seal the, the banjo to keep oil from leaking. So what we're going to do next, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and move this out of the way like so. We're going to want to take out this guy right here. Okay, so I couldn't find my metric Allen wrenches. I always use the ones on the ratchet. This one you can't do that because the ratchet's going to hit here. So you got to use the old school. This is a 3 16 Like I said, I can't find my metric, so I don't know what size it is in metric. You're going to go ahead and take this off, which this one's already loose, I just figured out. And you should be able to break it a couple times, turn it out with your fingers. Like that. Okay, I'm going to take that, I'm going to set this guy over here where he's not going to get lost in the strut tower. Set our Allen or inch somewhere it's not going to get lost. And then we're just going to grab a hole of it and we're going to wiggle it. It's going to pull out. This thing looks fine. That doesn't mean it's fine. What's so freaking ever. Uh, so what we're going to do is we can go down here and this has a Another squeeze deal on the back side of that. I'm going to go and squeeze that and unplug them. And we're going to pull them out. First thing we're going to do is look for oil on the plug in. This one doesn't have any. Let's see if it'll focus. Okay. No, it's not focusing, but you get the idea. There you go. Looks pretty clean. Maybe a little bit of residue, but not enough to hurt it. Uh, it does have a little bit in there. So <clears throat> what we're going to do, we're going to replace this. When you replace it, you have to make 100% sure the oil ring goes on the new one or the new sensor comes with the new oil ring. Then you're going to want to take a can of carburetor cleaner. You're going to go down here. You're going to want to squirt that out to make sure there's no oil or anything like that in there. Okay, so I went ahead and plugged it back in. It could be a little bit of a pain to plug back in. You have to push the metal bell down. You can see right there. Maybe. You have to push that down and then push it in there. You have to do it one handed. You cannot fit both hands in there. Okay, so what we're going to do, we took the O ring off the old sensor. We're going to install on the new sensor. We'll go ahead and do this with two hands. There we go. Stick it on there. We're just going to push it down all the way to the end. We're going to go ahead and Put it back in here like so. Try to close the gap up like that as best you can. And we're going to get the bolt. We're going to go ahead and restall it. Like so. A lot of times if they have the blue Loctite on the threads, they're not going to come out by hand too easy. You might have to use a wrench all the way out and that sucks. 
Okay, I'm going to get her Allen key. And we're not going to tie it up, but we're just going to snug it. Like right, if there was kind of snug, we'll just go just a hair feather, just to make sure it doesn't back out. Okay, we're going to go ahead and reassemble our banjo fitting, not forgetting to put the two washers on each side. We're going to turn the bolt until it's tight, and then just a hair more. We don't want this too tight, we don't want it too loose. And we're going to go ahead and thread in, we could actually do that right now. I'm going to thread in this guy. Like that, trying to keep the cord free behind it. Try not to let it get cold up too bad. Like that, take your wrench. Just snug it, we don't want it super, we don't want it retard tight, we just want it where it's not gonna leak. Uh, then of course this guy gets plugged back in. I'm going to go and set the camera down. I'm going to plug this guy back in, and then we're going to go ahead and put the banjo fitting back on. Okay, so here we are with it reinstalled. You can see the banjo fitting, the washers on each side of that. Snugged up real good, not too tight. We're going to go ahead and leave this cover off. We're going to leave this hose off for right now. We're going to try to start this thing up before we put anything else back on and uh, see what we got. So this is very important. Usually before you do this, you pull the codes. This car had no codes with the reader whatsoever. So let's go ahead and try to start it. Stumble. Okay, same old crap. So as our worst fear is confirmed, it's probably the crank sensor. So like I said early on in the video, we're gonna do the cam sensor either way. This car is hundred and almost 180,000 miles on it. The cam sensor looked to be original. That is definitely not gonna hurt this car to have that replaced. So let's go ahead and conquer the crankshaft sensor. Okay, so I started pulling this apart and I stopped and I thought, you know, for the guys that have no idea how to do this and never done it before, I better just go ahead and film every step of it. So what we did, you take a screwdriver and these lock in here like this. Take a screwdriver, stick in there. And you could just break them open like that. This guy here just unscrews. It's about a half turn and it comes off. This car is already missing the bolt for the air box, so we we'll have to worry about taking that out. We're gonna to to get a straight screwdriver, or I believe that's an eight, and we're gonna to to take that hose clamp off right there. After you take the hose clamp off right there, you're gonna come around here, you're gonna to wanna to ever so gently pull that tube out of the bottom of the boot. Now, I say ever so gently, you could easily rip this boot. You don't wanna do that. So once you get the tube off, we're going to inspect this hose for rips or problems with that. Okay, so here we are. We have the, the boot removed. The hose clamp takes off of there. We unplug the hose that goes into the bottom of the boot. And we're going to inspect this for cracks. There's no cracks coming out around it at all. Looks good. Got to make sure there's no cracks also. No cracks also on this guy. And you can see there is none on this one at all. And we're going to want to go down here. And we're going to want to take this bolt out. You want to have to, but it's going to make it a lot easier to do this job. We're going to go ahead and remove the, the traction control secondary throttle body. So you can see it has a secondary flap that works the traction control. The same 3 16 wrench to take out the sensor. You're going to use on here. There's another bolt right here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off and I'll come back. Okay, so here we are. We got the two bolts out. You can see it's falling off. We're gonna pull that off. We're gonna leave the cable hooked up to it. We're just gonna lay it back here out of the way. We're not gonna mess with the cable at all. So now, man, it's just really hard to see with this camera, but that sensor is down here on the side of the block. This thing just will not focus down there no matter what. Okay, so this is the best shot I get with this camera. Right here is the starter, the starter solenoid. The sensor is right below that. And it's gonna have the same 3 16 hex head bolt that the cam sensor is gonna have. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out. We'll pull it up here and we'll show it to you. Okay, well, sometimes these bolts are really hard to get out. They're down the side of the engine block. A lot of times you go and put the 
Allen key on it and it strips out. It strips out really easy like the metal's pretty much uh, just trashed. So this is where we ended up and pull out the housing. It makes it a little bit easier. I've had to do this one other time. Uh, so you take a 3 8 socket and have a really long extension. I don't know if you can see it or not. But I have the extension. on top of the bolt head. Now the bolt that's in there obviously is one of these guys. So I'm hammering over the top of it because the Allen key is just totally gone. It doesn't matter what you try to do to it, the metal's really soft. So I hammered it over there and it got it out. So we're gonna take it out, we're gonna replace it and see if this fixes the car. Okay guys, so here's the bolt. Just got it out. You can see it's pretty much toasted there you go but driving that socket on top of it did fix it when it stuck the new sensor in I'm gonna plug it up I'm gonna stick this stuff back on her temporarily and see if it's gonna start I don't want to put too much back together in case it does not fix it okay guys back inside now it's dark outside had to stop working on it uh, the car did not start after that um, I went through and took another crank sensor because that was a used crank sensor, but it was a new cam sensor. Replaced the crank sensor again, still did not start. When it tried to start, nothing at all. So I was trying to figure this out, and yesterday I told you I sprayed in the intake with carburetor cleaner. It would not start. I did it again today just to make 100% sure. Still would not. So I was trying to figure out what was going on. I was reading the can of the cleaner I was using and it says non-flammable. So you can see here, this is actually brake clean, which usually is fine. But the CRC brand, which is $5 a can, says right here, strongest brake clean formula. And then right below that, non-flammable. So that's why I wanted to start when I sprayed it. So what I did do, I had a partial can of regular carburetor cleaner that is flammable. Uh, just enough to spray it a little bit in the intake. I did that and it started right up. So tomorrow's video is going to be on the fuel pump replacement. I've already checked the fuses today. None of that's blown. The pump's not running. So we're going to pull that out tomorrow. Anyway, if you like today's video, uh, give me a thumbs up, comment. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also look me up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Nathan's DIY Garage. Thank you.